this session now. Um, so hello and welcome to Trauma-Informed Yoga with Lori and the conference closing. Um, if you've been attending our first annual Gender Justice Conference this, uh, this week, um, these past few days, you're probably familiar with me, but as a reminder, I'm Tess Benzer. I am the um, chair of this committee this year, as well as the assistant director in the Center for Women and Gender Equity. I am so honored to um, have had so many wonderful participants in this conference, and I just want to offer my thanks um, not only to our participants, but also to our presenters, to our facilitators of the sessions, to our Zoom moderators who've done a wonderful job this entire time. And also I want to offer my deep and sincere thanks to the entire Gender Justice Conference Planning Committee. Um, this committee would um, really is really responsible for making this entire conference become a reality and really planning some very wonderful pieces of it, um, including this closing session. Um, so I, I don't want to spend too much more of our time together today, um, but just know that I'm deeply, deeply grateful to everyone who has attended this conference. And without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Lori. Um, give me one moment and I will provide an introduction for you. Um, so it would be helpful if I had my thing ready to go, right? Uh, apologies, one second. Um, all right. so. Um, just so that folks are aware, we are going to go ahead and be recording this session. So if you would like to not appear on camera, we invite you, of course, to turn off your video, um, to rename yourself in Zoom using the rename option. Um, if you would like to not appear on the recording as just as a regular Zoom room. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, introduce Lori. So uh, Lori um, is an EDD candidate and also an adjunct professor of nutrition and kinesiology here at Westchester University. She is a dedicated practitioner of the eight limbed path of classical yoga, meditation and mindfulness for over 20 years. Lori shares her experiences within university uh, courses as the co-director of the 200 our yoga teacher training program. Her research seeks to connect the ancient contemplative traditions to modern neurobiology and trauma-informed teaching approaches. So without further ado, I'm going to turn this over to our wonderful guest, Lori. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you so much, Tess. I am so happy to be here. That's kind of really all a big mouthful, right? It's like, well, how did you get into yoga? Why are you doing it? What's so important about it? Um, teaching it, practicing it for such a long time allows for a journey and an understanding of what yoga really is, right? So um, you may have experience with yoga in the past, or you might be coming in with curiosity. Often we think of yoga as one of its practices or one of its limbs as being related to movement. And that's how most people start the practice of yoga. Yoga is um, really about just paying attention, just being in the moment has connections and is the foundation for mindfulness practices. And meditation is also one of the limbs of yoga. Um, my path to yoga didn't start as a blissful kind of experience going to a yoga studio and yoga pants and um, just moving in flexi bendy kind of ways. I think my path to yoga started as many people's path does with a lot of struggle. Um, as a 20 ish year old, I had a young toddler and um, was pregnant in a very high risk pregnancy. And my toddler was about to be diagnosed with an autism spectrum disorder. And I had to leave my job and I was kind of a mess and um, was tending to be very 
negative about myself and my abilities and my ability to handle that stress with any kind of competence. So luckily I found yoga and did yoga with some videos and then eventually made my, my way to a community class as my um, kids were young toddlers and I would escape for an hour. And that's really how it all started was this desire to escape and to get away. Um, I clearly needed that stress relief, but couldn't even deal with my own mind. So I couldn't do a relaxing yoga practice. I did a yoga practice with a lot of movement. And there are so many different ways to practice yoga. Um, and I've explored many of those over the last 20 years. And what I have come to realize and come to share is that if you can breathe, you can do yoga. Whether you feel like your mind and your life and your body are messy and challenging for you, or you feel at ease and comfortable, as long as you can breathe in and out, which is the very essence of our life, you can do yoga. So today I'm going to spend just a couple minutes sharing the thoughts I've had in the last day on these connections between yoga as part of gender justice and gender justice within yoga and also the connections and need for trauma-informed and trauma-aware teaching and practice. And um, after those couple minutes, we're going to dive into a practice that will be comfortable for you and offer lots of options. Um, we'll do some breath work and grounding, a little bit of movement, lengthening and getting that spine moving in all its wonderful directions to work out the kinks of Zoom life. And then we'll close with a little bit of rest and a loving kindness meditation. So that's our big picture plan. Um, and to me, it's, it's really interesting being a practitioner for 20 years and reflecting on how gender justice um, is critical in yoga and for yoga to continue. Historically, yoga began as a very patriarchal male dominated practice in ancient India. And we've seen over 5,000 years that that's taken time to shift and yoga went full swing the other direction toward a very, um, and I'll put in quotes, a very female, um, but a very specific female profile as being the um, picture of yoga on posters and advertisements and for yoga clothes of a very um, white, cisgendered, educated, thin female body was portrayed as being yoga. And it's not done anyone really any favors. We've seen out of that culture, more exposure happening around um, what's happened with the hypersexuality in yoga, where so many male teachers were given guru status and have been exposed as abusing their power. We see that despite scientific evidence that says what yoga can do for your physical and mental health, it's kind of often dismissed as being something for specific people that people say, I'm not flexible, I can't do yoga, or I need to lose weight in order to do yoga, or I'm not comfortable in a yoga studio. In some ways, online classes have increased yoga's accessibility and the people who feel welcomed by yoga. But we're seeing again, a shift from that male patriarchy to this specific um, representation of yoga coming back to the middle with the knowledge of trauma-informed practice, with the neuroscience where we can see 
on MRIs and see on EEGs that your brain waves change when you practice yoga, meditation, and mindfulness. We can see that this change over time leads to changes in your brain, in your medial prefrontal cortex, in your emotions, in how you feel as a person in how you feel about all the negative stories that your brain tells itself. So we see that we're shifting from this power over others dynamic that's even invaded yoga as a sacred practice. We see that we're shifting to the true meaning of yoga, this idea that we have power with, power with each other, power to lift each other up, the true depth of yoga is that happiness is one of our greatest aims, but not a personal momentary happiness when something good happens, when we get a job, when we pass a class, but the happiness of seeing other people be happy, the happiness of sharing our joy with others to lift everyone up that joy and liberation that gender justice is all about. Um, just a few more words on yoga and trauma um, and trauma healing. A trauma-informed practice is really a trauma-aware practice and being aware and cognizant that everyone has experienced trauma in their lives and we don't know about it. We don't need to ask about it but we are aware of it. Some people experience exponentially greater trauma than others. And it's often based on things that they have no control over. That trauma hits your nervous system like a lightning bolt. Sometimes not just one time with the initial trauma, but it can happen over and over again as daily life events can trigger that lightning bolt of trauma again. Your brain has this default mode network where it just kind of runs a cycle of thoughts that you chew on. And often those thoughts are meant to protect you. And evolutionarily, we needed them at one point to protect us. But often now they can relive trauma. They can relive stories that other people have told us that make us feel like we're not good enough, that we question ourselves, that we have self-doubt. And sometimes we don't even realize that that default mode network just keeps going and going and going. And it keeps our nervous system in a state of arousal or a state of frozen inaction. So our yoga practice with conscious breathing snaps us out of that default mode network, helps turn on what's been called by Dr. Herbert Benson, a Harvard cardiologist turns on the relaxation response, turns on our parasympathetic nervous system, lets cortisol go down, our stress hormones kind of relax so that we don't exhaust ourselves constantly. So our yoga practice, we know that science can help us change and it's really just starts with conscious breathing. And then as we move from conscious breathing into moving, thinking about the container you have for your breath all around your spine, circling that energetic superhighway that conducts those responses from brain throughout the whole nervous system, changes every cell in your body every moment. So science tells us that that can happen, can take away that lightning bolt put us into a more even wave in our brain waves of thought and throughout our whole body. And it helps us remind ourselves that we're enough, that our souls are beautiful, that our body is a miracle. As we move into practice today, everything that I offer, consider it an invitation, exploring what feels good in your own body, follow your own intuition, should not be painful at any time to practice yoga. Every movement that I give you, you could do sitting on the floor or in a chair. You could do it standing or lying down, moving the parts of your body that make sense to you. 
And you're welcome to shift at any point into a position that generally feels comfortable to you. I'll offer some suggestions as we move through, but make sure that you maintain comfort and ease. Um, and you're welcome again to leave cameras off. If at any point you want them on for connection, that's welcome also. I am going to at this time shift to a different camera and I am shifting myself toward the floor. Please um, feel free to let me know if you have any trouble hearing. If you have a comfortable space to sit on the floor, you can do that. If you have a yoga mat, you're welcome to do that. You can sit in any way that's comfortable. Again, in a chair is great. Uh, I like to sit on a little cushion on the floor. It's comfortable for me. And just arrange your legs in a comfortable position. That might be cross-legged or it might be the legs extended out with the knees bent or kind of in a little, this is sometimes called butterfly in yoga, but just with the feet together, knees open. I'm gonna be as comfortable as possible. You could also, if you like, lie down on your back, either with a cushion underneath your legs. If that feels better on your back, or if you don't have a cushion and your low back is a little discomfortable, you can always bend the knees, feet wide, knees relaxed in. So however you would like to start out, we'll spend a few minutes here settling into our breath. If you're comfortable closing your eyes, just let those eyelids rest and relax. If you're not in a space where it feels comfortable to close your eyes all the way, I just let the eyelids be heavy, gaze toward the floor. You might notice that as you close your eyes, there's an almost instinctual kind of feeling of taking a deep breath. If that happens, go ahead and settle into it. If not, that's okay too. You'll have time to watch your breath and settle in. So whether you're sitting or lying, begin to notice first your physical body. Overall, how is it feeling today? And as you notice your physical body, you might notice the, any thoughts that come up about your physical body. Things the default mode network is saying. Our yoga practice is partly about making friends with ourselves, our thoughts and our body with all parts of ourselves. So if you check in with your physical body and notice that it's tired or cranky or that your mind is tired or cranky or resistant, don't yell at yourself on top of that. Just see that thought, know it's just a thought. And see if you can greet it with friendliness. Friendliness towards your tired self, towards your cranky self. Friendliness towards your happy self. Just as if your best friend called you and told you how they were feeling. Give yourself that same care. Begin to notice those places on your body that connect to a surface, to a chair, to the floor. 
And see if you can just settle in, let go into those spaces. Might be your feet, parts of your legs or your sitting bones. You're lying down your whole back, the back of your head. Rest into those spaces. Those spaces that connect to the support of the earth, the heaviness of gravity. And out of that space of heaviness, see if you can feel a little more length through your spine. Might adjust your position a little bit to be comfortable but long through the spine, through the neck, up through the top of the head. If you're lying down, your hands might rest on the floor or on your belly. The same if you're sitting up, your hands might rest on your legs. You might place them on your abdomen or maybe even one hand on your abdomen, one hand on your heart. And begin to notice your breathing. Don't need to change it. Just see that as you breathe in, you're breathing in. As you breathe out, you're breathing out. You have your hands resting on your body. You might feel movement. Just notice that. Watch how your breath is like a wave in and out. Always perfect. Your breath connecting your mind and your body when you watch it. Every cell in your body breathing. You might let your exhale lengthen just a little bit more than your inhale. Notice if that helps relax your shoulders. Relax those areas that you connect to the earth. Keep settling into that steady in and out to your own personal rhythm. Maybe take this moment and keep your hands where they're at or let them rest at your sides. Or you might place them at your heart center, palms together or across your heart. This can be a good time to set an intention for your practice of yoga. What does your body need most right now or your mind? And also maybe to set an intention to honor that throughout to honor your body, to breathe and smile with ease, to treat your body with gratitude and good feelings. If you're in a lying down position, might slowly start to move in a way that works you up to sit, floor or chair, legs crossed or out, whatever feels good. Could also stand, of course. Just start to move a little. If you've been sitting, keep that connection to breath. You might wanna rub your legs a little. And if you can, breathing in and out through the nose helps keep that connection to the relaxation response. You can keep your eyes gazing soft or open them at any time. 
Move into a little movement connected to the breath. If you're a little slower or your breath ends a little faster than mine, honor your own breathing. Just starting with some movement of the spine, reaching the arms out to the sides and up with an inhale. And with an exhale, the hands back down to the sides, shoulders falling, inhaling, reaching the arms back up, hands might stay apart or come together. And exhale, slowly tracing the hands out to the side all the way down. Inhale, reach and lift through the whole spine. You might feel like you want to look up a little bit or just look straight ahead. And exhale as you bring your hands down. It might feel natural to look ahead as your neck is relaxed. Inhale again, reaching up and out. And this time exhaling, taking one hand to the floor, I'm gonna take my right hand down and reach across to the left, pressing down through the left hip, reaching across with the left arm, stretching through the side body. That's a little much on the shoulder or your hand could come to your rib cage. You might feel like you wanna roll open skyward through the heart a little bit. Breathing in and out here steadily for a couple more breaths in and out. You might soften your elbow on that arm that's reaching to the floor, or you might press away from the arm. On our next inhale, reaching back up through the right arm, shifting as you breathe out, taking the left hand down to the floor and right arm reaching across or hand on the ribs. Whatever feels good and opening skyward, just however you like, however you can still breathe comfortably, feeling that breath expand the body and relax the body. Spending a few breaths here, allowing that side body to open up nicely. Another breath here in and out. And then inhaling, reaching both arms back up to the center. Exhaling, bringing your hands slowly down and out to the sides might feel like you could reach behind you a little bit, either to the floor or a cushion or to your back. And look up gently, bring your elbows back behind you, opening through the chest and heart area. And then exhaling, rounding in a little bit, tucking your chin in, to bring your hands to your hips. And inhale, come to neutral spine. Just opening a little more through the neck. Take your right ear over toward your shoulder, chin down toward the collarbone. Just trace a little line over to the other collarbone. To the left ear, we'll pause here. And exhale, trace that line back across to the right side. Spend a couple breaths here, just leaning, finding a little sweet spot that allows you to stretch out the left side of the neck. Might even feel like you wanna extend that left hand back a little bit, reach with your fingertips behind you toward a solid surface. See if that gives you a yummier stretch. If not, just keep your hand relaxed. Notice how it feels as you breathe in and out. And then release that hand if it's back behind you, you could bring it forward again and take your chin across down to the chest. Tuck in here, take a breath in and out. Just find a spot not where you're kind of clenching or overextending, but where the back of the neck gets some length. Breath in and out. 
Lift your head up to neutral, right? Above the top of the spine. And then swing down over left ear toward the left shoulder. Find the spot where you need the stretch. Find that edge of any tension in your neck and shoulders. And if you like reaching the right arm back behind you a little bit, touching the fingertips down to a solid surface, just to give a little resistance and push against, breathing in and out. Steady through the nose. Another breath in and out. Bring your chin back into the center. You might drop it down toward the chest again. And then take it over to the right just as comfortably as it will go. And exhale, draw that little line over to the left collarbone and pause. Breathe in, breathe out, slide over to the right again. Breathe in, coming back to the center, get a little bit more waking up happening through the shoulders, moving with breath. Inhale, reaching your arms open. And exhale, reach around. You can round and take the elbows or if your hands feel more comfortable, reaching around toward the shoulders. To exhale and inhale, opening out to the sides like you're hugging the whole world. And exhale like you're hugging yourself in close. Inhale, extend and open outward, lift your heart. You might look upward. And exhale, hugging close, tuck your head in. Again, inhale, opening up. And this time you might feel like you can do cactus or goalpost arms with your forearms perpendicular to the floor, upper arms parallel. Maybe just tilt back a little bit through your top fingertips and out through your pinkies. See if that gives you a stretch that feels good through your arms. Take another breath here. And exhale, bring those arms in close to each other. Notice where it stops to feel good and just pause and breathe. If it feels comfortable, you could line your forearms up or take eagle arms, taking your right elbow on top of the left, stacking those arms up together and maybe reaching up a little bit, reaching deep in through those shoulders. If at any point you need to stretch your legs out, you can go ahead and do that. Inhale, open the arms out wide again, coming into the cactus arms, and then bringing the arms together on an exhale. And if you like and it feels good, cross the left elbow on top this time, maybe reaching up a little bit. Breathing steady in and out. Notice if your shoulders are all the way up at your ears and slide them down even as you reach up. Breathe in, opening your arms back out as far as it's comfortable. Breathing out, reach your arms around, give yourself another hug. Breathe in, reach up and out. Breathe out, take your hands down to your sides. Breathing in, reaching out and up. We're gonna do a little twist. Again, you can go to either side, so there's no wrong side, but on an exhale, I'm gonna reach to the right, taking my left hand to the right side of my leg to give me a little lift as I twist right, opening the chest. Breathing deeply, feeling the breath on both sides of the body, expanding open the heart. Take two more long, comfortable breaths here. Breathing in, coming back to the center. You can reach up and out to the sides. Breathing out, a nice gentle twist over to the left. 
sometimes we hear the word twist and we think it needs to be kind of harsh or aggressive or we're moving the spine. We're really just opening the space around our chest and our heart. Breathe in and out here. Let yourself receive that stretch and lift up through the crown of the head. Breathing in, coming back to the center, reaching up. Breathing out, bringing your hands down to your knees and moving into a little more spine stretching called cat and cow. So as you exhale, rounding the back out and tucking your chin in, feeling all along those muscles along the sides of your spine that need a little bit of stretching. And we'll move with breath on your next inhale, lift up through the heart, slide your shoulders down, you might lift your head and look up or just look straight ahead. Breathing out, rounding, tucking in, feeling your back body get bigger from your tail to your head. Inhale, lifting up, extending and rolling open, dropping the shoulders. Exhaling, moving into cat, rounding. You can move a little with your own breath. We'll do this one more time after this cow. We'll do another cat and another cow. So just enjoying, might even feel like there's some little spot to the right or the left that you wanna lean into. You're in your own space. Enjoy that space. Same thing as you breathe in, you might Find some little area that you want to just lean one way or another. And then breathing out, come to that neutral spine again. And we'll slowly start to shift. So um, I'm going to shift on to all fours, to my hands and to my knees. This may not be comfortable for everyone. It may... Feel good if you're on a yoga mat to roll it up under your knees or you might want a towel. You could also do this standing up and holding on to the back of a chair. Just imagine that I was standing. So that's another great option here if that feels better for you. So taking hands to the floor or to the back of your chair, what we're looking to do is line up either hips to feet if you're standing or hips to knees if you're on all fours and your shoulders above your wrists. And from here, doing that cat cow again, it gives a little bit more movement in the hips. So you can exhale, round through the back, spine up toward the ceiling. And as you inhale, uncurl. So just two more of these, move with your breath, exhaling, rounding upward into cat, and inhaling, uncurling, releasing, lifting the head. One more time and exhale into cat, and then inhale into cow. One of the resting postures in yoga is often not so restful. So there are also options here. From tabletop, if you're on the floor, you might just shift your hips back and reach your arms forward a little bit. And you could always put a pillow underneath you. If you're standing up using a chair, same thing. Put your hands on the back of the chair and walk your feet back until you can get that kind of feeling of length in your back and your shoulders. So you have options here. You could stay up like this. If you're on the floor, you can go into a little playful puppy pose of your hips up in the air, your chest toward the floor, or you could sink and press back a little more. Knees apart, your body resting towards your legs, head resting toward the floor in child's pose. So choose one of those that feels good on your knees and your back. 
And breathe in and out a few more times here in the stretched out position. Really just any position that allows your breath to move around your spine. Free and easy. Breathe in, lift yourself back up to all fours. And again, same thing. You can do this holding on to the back of your chair. You're gonna just shift balance a little bit. See what it feels like to lift your right hand up and then place it back down. Notice how your balance shifts if you lift your left hand up just a little off the floor and place it back down. If you feel comfortable and strong, reach your right arm up a little bit higher in front of you. Look over your fingertips. Push the chair or the floor away. Lift up through your body and breathe in and out. And take your right hand back to the floor as you breathe out. And take your left hand up, same thing. Lift yourself up, pushing away. Breathe in and out nice and steady. Take that left hand back to the floor. And this time we're gonna reach the right arm up and out to the side. If that feels comfortable, you can go back to either of those other movements, opening the right side of the chest. And then on an exhale, take that right hand, reach it across and underneath the body to the left. And feel free to move with the breath. Inhale, reaching the right arm up and out. And exhale, reaching the right arm under the body to the left. One more time, inhale, reaching up and open. Exhale, reaching under, curling in. And inhale, reach open again. Before exhaling, letting that right hand float back to the floor. Feel yourself stable and steady, floor or chair with both hands. And same thing on the other side. You could hover that left arm, working your balance, moving with breath, or inhale, open the left arm to the left, reaching up and back as much as you like. And exhale, reaching under, almost like a, you're bowling. Inhale, opening up wide. And exhale, reaching under, curling in. Inhale, open and lift, push the earth away. And exhale, reach under. Inhale, open it up. And exhale, softly come back to the floor. You might press back again through the hips in whatever position you're in, toes curled under or feet flat. Just stretch through the back, release your head and neck. And I'll invite you to lift just for a few breaths into downward facing dog, lifting up through the knees, pressing back through the hips. You can do this by walking your feet back and kind of feeling like you're in a V position from your chair if you're using that as well, hands on the back of the chair. If you're in this position on the floor, you might walk feet to the floor the heels toward the floor one at a time and really work to bend the knees, press your hips back. We're gonna kind of walk our feet in and our hands in until we can comfortably, somewhat gracefully, always feels a little ungraceful, come up to a standing position in mountain pose. So taking feet apart here, just so that they're comfortable. Take a moment to breathe in and out. Resettle yourself in this position. Notice how your feet are rooting down. Your legs are steady and strong. Your spine is lifting up all the way through the crown of the head, rooting down to earth reaching up towards sky. Take a breath in, lifting up. Take a breath out, relaxing down. 
Take a few breaths here. In, feel the lift. Out, feel the release down. On your next inhale, if you feel like it will increase that lift up, inhale, reach your arms up. And on your next exhale, if you feel like it'll increase your grounding down, you could relax forward. You could put your hands anywhere on your legs or on the back of a chair. You could take your elbows, relax here, in and out. If you have any uncontrolled blood pressure or problems with pressure in the eyes or just feel dizzy sometimes, you might keep your head above your heart, supporting yourself on with your hands on your legs or a chair. Breathe in and out wherever it feels good, taking another breath, imagining tension draining from the base of the spine out through the crown of the head down away from the body. Breathe in, look up. You can put your hands on your legs or the waist or the chair, roll your shoulders open. And breathe out, working your way back toward the floor or towards your chair. Coming back toward a sitting position. We're going to build a little bridge pose, one of the most therapeutic postures often incorporated into physical therapy. Um, there are many ways to do this. You can do it sitting in a chair, reaching arms back and heart lifting. You can lie down on the floor with your feet about hip distance apart. Pressing down through the feet, can press your arms down into the floor and just lift the hips up a little bit. You could put your hands underneath your hips or a block, book, or any kind of pillow. If it feels good to you, you might press down into the feet a little more and lift the hips up higher. If it feels really good in the front of the body and you feel like you need a little more, you might Kind of wiggle your arms underneath you and put your hands together. Again, do what increases your ability to breathe. Stay wherever you're at for a breath or two or come down anytime you like. I'm gonna stay here for another breath in. And out, lowering down through the back, through the hips, and taking the legs side to side, taking the legs to the right, back to the center, exhale over to the left. You can keep your feet down on the floor if you're sitting in a chair or down if you're lying, or you might move with breath and feel like the soles of your feet want to lift up. Just follow what feels good. Exhaling to a side, come back to center. Exhale to the other side. You might pause if you feel that you find a nice spot that needs a stretch. Pause for a couple breaths. Or keep moving back and forth gently with the breath. Legs swaying like the wind of the breath. Spending just a couple more breaths here, starting to slow your breathing down. And returning the legs to the center. Might find a little wiggle in there. If it feels good to you to bring your knees into your chest, if you feel a release in the low back, you might do that. Sometimes it feels good to have the knees wide apart when we do that. It might feel good for you to move side to side over the lower back to give yourself a little massage or even in a little circle. Find what feels good for your back here. 
there's anything else that your body feels like it needs before we move into stillness, you are welcome to offer that to your body now. Might even feel good to just straighten the legs and take them up toward the ceiling if you're lying down on the floor with the bottoms of the feet facing upward. Or you might want to give yourself a nice hug again, whether you're sitting or lying. And then if you like shifting into any position that you can rest, you can rest standing or sitting or lying down. If you're lying down and don't have a cushion, Sometimes again, for the low back, it can feel good to slide your feet apart, let the knees fold in on each other. You might rest the hands on the belly or the heart or across the chest in a constructive rest position. Find your place and settle in. Gonna sit up only so that you can hear me as I guide you. Whatever position you're in, resettling into those places where you connect to a solid surface. Feel yourself rooting down. Maybe with each exhale, you might feel a little heavier. Relax into that heaviness. Take a moment to just enjoy silence, breathing in this moment being here. One of the most important practices in yoga is that of loving kindness. Loving kindness is often done as a meditation. And stay in your own comfortable position. Begin to reconnect with your physical body, perfect and enough, just as it is. Reconnecting with your intention, with noticing a wish. What do you wish for most for yourself? Traditional phrases in yoga are things like, may I be happy? May I be peaceful? May I be free from suffering? If one of those resonates with you, repeat that to yourself a few times silently with your peaceful breath. And we wish loving kindness toward ourselves first. because that's the foundation for being able to take loving kindness out 
to all our interactions with other people. Again, noticing how you're feeling. Come back to your physical body. And allow sensations to return. Sounds around you. Smells. Feeling of the temperature in the room. Slowly allow movement to return again. Small movements in your fingers and your toes. Your hands and your feet might move through your wrists and your ankles. And you might feel like you want to extend upward again and a big stretch. And then maybe curl inward in a hug. If you're lying down, slowly working towards sitting position again. Taking that last moment to set your intention for going out into the rest of your day. Yoga practice often ends with an acknowledgement of namaste, which you may have heard. The short version of namaste is just thank you. The more poetic, longer version is that the light in me sees the light in you. Namaste. Thank you for practicing and thank you for being here. Lori, thank you so much for that wonderful, wonderful session. That was really lovely. Thank I appreciate you. It so much. Um, yeah, um, I think that that's everything. Thank you, folks who've joined us. Uh, hi, little one. Hey, Tom. Uh, it's been so wonderful having folks here. And I think with that, we will conclude. Um, by which I mean, Lindsay, you can stop. <laughs>